Chapter 7 is about public goods and commons. Chapter 7 consists of five sections. For the moment, we distinguish between three types of public goods. There are three funding sources for public goods, taxes, social insurances and fees. Here I briefly summarize the major insights about public goods from three theoretical perspectives. In neoclassical economics, public goods are only justified when there is market failure, hence when markets do not produce these goods. But there are some problems. Free riding is a big problem when agents always try to get uh, the best out of what they can, so what's in it for me reasoning. And also the funding, because when you raise taxes too much, according to the neoclassical perspective, people are no longer willing to pay their taxes. The diagram on this slide shows you why. This is the Laffer curve, named after an economist called Laffer. On the horizontal axis we have the tax rate and on the vertical axis the tax revenue. Now you see that when you increase the tax rate you will increase tax revenue, but not endlessly. After point T, the optimum, 
the curve goes down, meaning that you can increase the tax rate, but this will not increase tax revenue. We have domestic public goods, but some problems in the world are across borders. They're global. So ideally, we would need global public goods, for example, to fight global warming, poverty and financial instability. Institutional economics looks at global institutions as those who should initiate and coordinate and organize public goods at the global level. Think about the United Nations, the World Bank and other global organizations. Post-Keynesian economics came up with the idea of a global tax. Of course, it's not a global income tax, that would not work, or a global value-added tax. But the idea came from the economist James Tobin. It's sometimes called the Tobin tax. It's a tax on international financial transactions. And theoretically, that could raise a lot of money. The fourth type of public good that we discuss in this chapter are commons. This table shows you what it costs to develop uh, kind of public goods to protect these commons, but also what are the costs in the long run for all of us if we do not do that. Remember, these are opportunity costs. And we see that for each of these five problems at the global level, the cost of doing nothing is higher than the cost of trying to solve it together. Commons is short for common pool resources, resources that people use jointly, often with implicit rules. Institutional economics has analyzed how these rules originate and what type of rules people make in order to manage common pool resources.
this slide shows you seven types of working rules that people use to manage comments. Social economists emphasize the role of social norms in communities that help people to manage, protect, coordinate common pool resources. In social economics, there is also the recognition of a threat to upholding a social norm, and that is migration. When many, many people move out or new people move in, it's quite difficult to keep everybody upholding the same social norm. The neoclassical analysis of common pool resources is rather grim. It recognizes that ideally one should split up the common pool to individual property, but then it's quite difficult to still prevent free riding. So you need a government to regulate and to enforce, but that is costly. You have to pay for all these monitoring costs. So actually, in neoclassical economics, there is no solution to what is called the tragedy of the commons. This final slide gives you an overview of the four types of goods that we distinguish, particularly when we think about the difference between private goods in markets and public goods. There are two axes, horizontally the degree of rivalry and vertically the degree of excludability. The first one means if I use a good do I prevent you from using it as well or not? The vertical dimension is when I want to use it, can I prevent you from using it as well? The pure public good does not have much rivalry or excludability, whereas a pure private good does. In between are club goods, where you can exclude non-members, 
or common pool resources where there is low excludability. It's very difficult to exclude people from using these resources and there's high rivalry 